again for joining us. I'm Cynthia Kula, and I'm the product manager. And we have Roxanne Bacolt. She's our wonderful instructor and creative team manager. And we have Brooke Mayer, and she's the person who is so wonderful about answering the questions that you type into that question box. So it looks like we already have questions. <laughs> so watch out, Brooke. She'll do her best to answer those, and we'll also probably get to some of those online as um, Roxanne begins to to design and studio. So let's get going on our Halloween class. But before we turn it over to Roxanne, I'm going to go ahead and choose an attendee, pick one out of the hat here to win some free publishing points. And the name I've gotten is Sylvia Brown. So Sylvia, congratulations. Brooke is going to put 20 publishing points into your account in the next couple of days, and we're so glad you joined us. So all right, Roxanne, are you ready to take it away? I am. Okay, let's go ahead and get started here. I don't know about you guys, but I absolutely love the fall. It's my favorite time of year. I actually have been working on these fall and Thanksgiving projects and Halloween projects for probably the last month, so I'm really in the mood. I actually took down all my summer decorations of the house um, this past weekend, and my house is all decked out in fall already, so I'm ready for football and bonfires and cooler weather. So we are actually going to start with Thanksgiving, and I know you guys think that's a little odd here in the States, but we're actually start with um, Thanksgiving first because our Canadian friends have their Thanksgiving first on October 13th this year. So I actually kind of like that we have the Canadian Thanksgiving ahead of ours um, in the States because that gives me time to get all my Thanksgiving and Halloween things done at the same time. So I kind of group all my projects together and um, ship everything together, and I'm well ahead of schedule that way. So let's go ahead and talk about some fabulous fall projects. All right, we're going to start with some scrap pages. I always like to start with scrap pages because it's a great way to document kind of single moments and um, individual events that don't necessarily, you can't come up with a whole storybook for. Um, you don't want to spend necessarily the money on a canvas. But I love scrap pages. They're absolutely beautiful, and it's a great way to collect different moments in time and put them all together in a post-bound album. So we've got a design here. This one's for um, November, and I love this. It's called, um, I believe it's Happy Family Art Collection. I love this collection and kind of the fall colors. It's a little um, modern in nature, but still has that traditional feel. So I love this one too, and we kind of use the calendar grid in here as well and use it as an actual design um, element. We have this one here called Grateful by Shanna Vineyard, and another one here, Pumpkin Patch by Jill Means. Both Shanna and Jill are past creative team members of ours, and they do beautiful work. We're, we're happy to have all their stuff in the gallery. So great kind of more traditional look with a single photo and a cr great way to display, you know, photos of a pumpkin patch. There's obviously plenty of room for journaling here, too, um, if you'd like to do that. And along with the scrap pages, we have beautiful post-bound albums. I love these albums because I, I actually have a couple at my house, too, that I've created. And I just put those single moments in time into these um, post-bound albums, which are great. There's one here that kind of can go Halloween, fall, Thanksgiving. It works. They're both very universal um, in the coloring. So I like to collect all my fall um, themed projects in these post-bound albums. So look for these in the Temple Gallery. This one here is by Carrie Pratt. And this one here, this family one by Michelle Bell. Both beautiful designs. And our fun subway prints. Our 11 by 14 subway prints, and any actually 11 by 14 prints um, this month are actually on sale. So when you go to publish, you get an extra 10% off um, when you go to publish. So it's a great time to publish these 11 by 14 prints. We love our subway prints. They've been very popular, and we come up with new designs every year. Um, there's lots of fun ones. There's some that are not personalized, some that are personalized. So I, I tend to like, you know, my family name on them. So if any of these designs don't have a family name, you know, your last name, or you want to put all the kids' names in there, these are all, you know, easy to edit. You just, you know, double click on a text line and just pick one line and change it into your family name. They're very easy to customize with colors, um, changing the words. They are great. We have a design here from Carrie Peratt. She's got several um, 
fall seasonal 11 by 14s in the gallery. So there's just too many in the gallery for us to show all of them, but we're picking out our favorites tonight. And this Thanksgiving turkey word art is wonderful. And I know Anna Bates, who designed this, also did this in several different versions. There's um, some cards and maybe a different um, size, maybe a canvas, I think. So look for those. They're all grouped together with coordinating projects down the bottom. Uh, Brooke Mayer has done this um, autumn subway, which is great. I love it, very modern, and the colors are easy to change on this one. And then I kind of did a more traditional take on the fall family subway with lots of different mixes of fonts and other pieces of word art and have little things scattered here and there. But once again, everything is customizable, so if you don't like the little leaves blocking some of the letters, just go ahead and delete them. These 11 by 14 prints are fabulous for framing. Um, I always get the coupons from, you know, Michaels and save up for them. You get 40 to 50% off. And these 11 by 14 um, frames are a standard size. So you can get them very inexpensively. And a lot of these are designed in a way that they have like a little mat looking on them already. So you just pop them in the frame and it looks like there's a little mat on it. So these are great. You can change them per season. So I have this fall one out right now. But as soon as I get a little closer to Halloween, I'm going to pop the back off and substitute it with my 11 by 14 Halloween print. And when Halloween is over, I'll put back in this fall one, and then I'll change it again right before Christmas. So I have a whole pile of 11 by 14s, and I just switch them out to fit whatever holiday or season it is. We've also got a great selection of holiday uh, greeting cards for Thanksgiving. This is a new one. Um, happy fall, y'all. I actually, I live in Atlanta, so we hear happy fall, y'all quite a bit. I don't have a southern accent, but it's really cute. I love hearing it. But if you don't live in the south and still like the way this card looks, go ahead and change it to happy fall 2014 or happy fall to you. It's a great little greeting card to send to family and friends with maybe a new picture of your children on it would be great. There's also just kind of more simple um, thank you cards. It's a great time of year to kind of reflect on your friends and family members and, you know, really let them know how thankful you are for them. We often think it, but we don't say it enough. So, you know, how fun would it be for someone just to get a card in the mail that they did not expect? I'm always thrilled to get something, a card in the mail from somebody who is thinking about me. So, it, you know, it makes me feel real good. So you can do the same for a friend of yours. Along with this design here, this is called uh, washi thanks. These are actually pieces of washi tape, little pieces of tape in our art collection. It's just a whole bunch of random set to kind of make these little strips, which is kind of cute. I also developed this playing card deck. Um, it's just like a regular deck of cards, but instead of being the traditional suit, you know, to play cards, you know, the hearts and spades, I actually turned them into Thanksgiving dinner conversation starters. So I'm actually going to print a set for our family, but I thought these would be great, too, to take as uh, if you're going to someone else's house for dinner or around that time of year. It's a great little hostess gift that you could bring someone to, and it's personalized. You can put their family name on it. Um, you can use this for, you know, Thanksgiving, but it can be for any time of year if you just change it up a little bit. Um, you can just put the family name up here if you'd like. But it's like fun little dinner, dinner conversation topics. Like this one down here says, what is your favorite family tradition? And this one says, if you could invite anyone to Thanksgiving dinner, who would it be? What foods are your, what are you most grateful for? So you just kind of pass the deck around and everybody pulls a card and answers the question. So it's great for conversation. There's some funny ones and some just, you know, ones that make you think and you really tell why you're grateful and happy for certain things. And there's also another just a little fun quote one here um, that has a full family photo on the back, full photo of anything you put at your kids or, you know, your pets, whatever you want. Just a nice reminder that, that you're thankful for certain people in your life. All right. And don't forget the little flip books. <laughs> These are great. I actually made um, this one down here. It's called Count Your Blessings. And I made this a couple years ago for my boys. Each boy got one. And Every page has a number on it, so there's 10 ways that I count my blessings, and I, and I tell how 
special they are to me. So they were just, you know, it's fun for them to look over, and it's it's quick and easy to do. You know, you don't have to do a lot of things. You can usually use the copies that I've written is pretty generic enough that you could use, and then you just change photos. I took the boys to a pumpkin patch one day and had a fun photo shoot with them, and we had a great time, you know, just enjoying the fall harvest. This is another great one here that's been very popular from Tanya Rigby, who is also a past creative team member. There's a whole set of products that go with this. So if you're in the template gallery and you look up her Thanksgiving blessing book, down below you'll also see suggested coordinating products as well. So I know there's kind of a, a blessings bucket and some cards and maybe a placemat, just fun things to do. But you go through and you know each of the kids or you tell why you're thankful for one of your other family members. I also wanted to point out these two art collections are very popular, um, art collections and papers. This one's from the Grown Ups Table, and this one is a 365 Days with You November. And as I mentioned before, my other fall favorite is a new collection called A Happy Family. So mark those down and be sure to check those out as well. All right, so these are brand new. I actually really liked that design by Tanya Rigby earlier. And Sarah Wise had come up with these Hershey candy bar wrappers back when we were talking about year-end to school things. So I said, let's take it a step further, and let's try making them for the other holidays as well. So I came up, for, came up with this Thankful for You and Chocolate Hershey's candy bar wrappers. So you'll find these on a 12 by 12 scrap page, which you see here. And it's basically four up on a page. I've kind of done different papers. Um, but once again, easy to customize. You just drag and drop and swap your papers. If, if this isn't the set of papers you like, then go ahead and maybe use that Happy Family set instead with different colors. But they're easy to change up, and you basically just cut them out when you get them back. You just wrap them around your Hershey's Milk Chocolate Bar, and you just, I like to, you can either tape them on the back or use those blue dots, or I use double-sided tape so I don't see any of the um, tape showing and stuff, but they're a perfect fit and they're really cute. They'd be great for teacher gifts or, you know, for each of your guests at your Thanksgiving dinner. There's also a coordinating two different designs for these Hershey Nuggets. This is the big, um, there's a big pack you can buy, and I think there's 150 of these Nuggets in the big pack, but those small bags, I buy the small bags all the time, and I think there's 36 in that. But with your address labels, it's one design on the address labels, and when you order a quantity of one, you get 54 address labels in that order. I know people have said, do I just get one label? It's like, no, you get actually 54 of these little address labels. So all you do when you get your little Hershey Nuggets is you'll just take the center design here and just put it right in the center, and then since these are the peel and stick, they just wrap around the edges to the back, and then they just fit perfectly. The, the two ends in the back or the bottom will come together perfectly. So these are great. I have done so many designs of these little Hershey nuggets. I do them for sporting events. I always keep different holiday themed ones in our candy jar in our living room. I give them to teachers all the time. These are great. So be sure to look out for these. All right, there's also a time to be playful. I came up with this design. This is on another 12 by 12 scrap page, which are so versatile, you just don't have to do scrap pages. Designs all the time, you can turn them into more kind of crafting things. These are six up on a page on a 12 by 12, and basically you'll cut them out, and if you fold them in half, you, know, you can score them on the back a little bit so they fold easy. Then you just get either, you can buy the clear cellophane bags um, at party supply stores, you know, sometimes they have little designs on them. Or the other great thing to use is just the regular baggies that you buy at the grocery store. Instead of the sandwich size one, buy the snack size. So they're the same width as the, the sandwich ones, but they're just a little shorter, so you can put a little less candy in them. So you just fold the little scrap page over the top, and then you can just staple it um, there, and it holds in place. So this one was a little playful. I said Thanksgiving turkey toes, and these are candy corn, but during Thanksgiving, you can actually find cinnamon-flavored ones, so they're a little bit darker. They're kind of brown and orange instead, which are perfect for the turkey toes. But if you don't want to be so silly, you know, you can turn it into, you can simply say, Happy Thanksgiving, 
or I've seen on Pinterest, you know, blessings mix where it's the combination of some Reese's Pieces, which are kind of the orange colors, um, those bugle chips, which look like little cornucopias. You can have popcorns. You know, you can do fall-colored M&Ms. So you can make it as playful as you want, or you can get a little bit more serious, too. Great. How did everybody do with the Thanksgiving things? I think everyone's just really enjoying them. I don't have any questions about them yet, so. Great. We will love keep them, going. Love them, love <laughs> them. Good. We've got a lot of information to cover. So I, I know I'm talking quick tonight because we've got a lot of things to go through. But we always record these classes, too. So if you miss something, you can go back and listen to the recording later and catch, you know, maybe the template ID numbers if you miss those. All right. Let's enter into Halloween. All right. Here are some of our scrap pages. I love this one by Carrie Peratt. Very fun. I love the diagonal stripe. It's a great play on our snapshot stories system. Very easy to use. This is actually a two-page spread available in the template gallery so that you have a nice spread in your post-bound album. There's also this ready-to-trick-or-treat one by Michelle Bell. So it gives you the option to put in more photos, which is great. And here's another new one on that Mark the Calendar set that I have done um, for the fall. So you can add one picture. If you don't like the calendar grid and would prefer journaling, go ahead and remove the grid, move the spiders over, and you can do some journaling here. So some great options. These 8 by 20 wrap canvases have been very popular over the years. I, all my friends who are on Heritage Makers, we all have one. And we put them up proudly at Halloween to welcome all of our trick-or-treaters. Um, these are three of our most popular ones. We have Fantastic Halloween Welcome by Linda Angelostro. We have the Family Boo Crew, Boo Crew by Carrie Peratt. And Spectacular Halloween by Sandra Javray, who is also a former team member. So these are great. Once again, easy to customize. We have several different options besides these shown in the template gallery. So look through our um, selection for the 8x20 canvases. And I love our metal prints. We've got so many great designs for these. These are three of my favorites. This is Eat, Drink, and Be Scary by Brittany Hutchins. She does not have customization on here, but if you're one that likes to make it extra special by adding a family name, you can go ahead and grab these Halloween letters or alphas and move them up a little bit. And then you'll have room down in the orange part to add your family name. Or you can go ahead and there's probably room down here that you can add your name to. So this is fun with these little playful characters. I know the kids would love this one. This one here, I love our bracket metal print by Brooke. This is brooms, bats, and toads. And so you can hang it with a ribbon if you like. They have um, an option available for it's a, like a little back as a backer block that sits on there so that you can hang things on the wall. I just like to wrap, I, I get that little backer that comes with it um, as an option. And you actually, you might not have to get it. I always get it because I like to wrap the ribbon around the back side to hold it steady. And I just put some little glue or tape on that just to hold the ribbon. Sometimes I bring the ribbon up and tie a bow up here. It just depends on the look you want. But I think this would look great with some maybe some orange chevron ribbon. It'd be great to hang on your door outside. Or I've seen people, too, that have a wreath hanging on their front door, and then they hang this or this one inside the wreath on your front door. They look great. So um, this one here is by Carrie Peratt, this other vertical one. This is our French line metal print, and this is a fun Halloween thing on it, too. So, you know, be on the lookout for these. Uh, the metal prints are wonderful if you haven't tried one of those yet. All right, we're back to having some fun. Just like the turkey toes I showed you earlier, we've got some other fun ones for actual Halloween. This one is Rotten Pumpkin Teeth. So there's six designs, once again, on the 12 by 12 scrap page. Um, each 12 by 12 makes six, and you're just going to cut them out, fold them in half, and staple to the snack size baggies. I know for sure I am doing this one. My kids love s'mores. I mean, who doesn't love s'mores? So this is a perfect little s'mores bag. They come with a little peach now, come in ghost shape. 
And I've actually seen just um, regular marshmallows, I think, ship, um, sell ghost shapes now and some other shapes as well, and they're colored. So I just put a little marshmallow ghost peep in there, a couple of graham crackers, and I think this fits the, I think it's a 1.45 ounce Hershey's chocolate bar, kind of the standard size bar. But you could also stick a couple of these little Hershey, kind of just the mini ones in there if you didn't want to buy the bigger bars. But these say things like s'more monster hugs, please, or um, I think it's happy Halloween for Pete's sake, or happy Halloween s'mores for one of my very favorite peeps. So you can change these and make them into anything you want, but I just love the little the little piece is adorable. So I'm going to go into studio right now and show you a quick kind of how to change it up. Say you didn't want um, rotten pumpkin peas, but you really want to do maybe, I've seen things like witch's broomsticks, which could be, you know, the pretzel stick. There's witch's warts, which could be chocolate chips, or you could use green jelly bellies. You could do skeleton bones, which could be kind of broken up white chocolate pretzels, all sorts of different things. So say you wanted six different things. It's easy to do, so let's go ahead and go in the studio, and I'll show you how to do that. All right, so I've just opened up my page here. And on these pages, too, I've put a little picture here so you can see what the finished product, product looks like and some instructions as well in most of these kind of candy wrapper templates so you know what to do. All right, so what should we do? These are rotten pumpkin teeth. Let's go ahead and do a witch's one. So let's go to our art collection. I'm going to type in witch. You can type in witch if you know specifics, or go ahead and type in Halloween, and it'll give you some different options. I like this kind of modern flat look. So here's a witch's hat right there. So let's just drag that up and see if anything else looks interesting. Nope, I think I'm just going to use the witch's hat. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to grab the corner, and I'm just going to size it down. And I want to be aware on these designs that fold in half to make sure you don't want anything to go beyond the halfway mark. And to find the halfway mark really quickly, all you need to do is click on the background paper, which is the width of the thing you're going to cut out. And if I do an unlock, I can see the little handle if I wanted to rotate or to move it. The little handle goes to right to the center in the middle. That's where you're going to be. The halfway mark is for folding. So I just want to make sure that my hat or whatever I'm putting here, it could be a skeleton, is below this center mark just so that it doesn't get folded over the edge. So I'm going to make that a little smaller. Let me go in bigger so you can see it better. All right, so we're going to pull that down, and then I'm just going to delete the pumpkin behind it. Up a little bit and we'll say witches, witch, what should we call it? Witch, witches, warts. Let's try that. Witches, warts. And I might move this down a little bit. So I'm just going to unlock my text box and just pull it down. And this is actually smaller in size than this long phrase here, so I can actually make it a little bit larger. So I'm going to go to my toolbox, and I'm just going to scale up the size a little bit just to fill it up a little better. Perfect. And I still like the black, but I know for witches' warts, I'm going to use the green jelly bellies, say. So let's go ahead, and we're going to change this outer seal color to a green. I can either select my eyedropper tool and choose a green from the color palette here, Let's see if any of these work. These are a little bright, maybe. Let's go down here. What I like to do, if I don't see any colors in there that I like, I go down to my art collections, and I type in green. And let's see what it brings up here. So there's, I like this green here. So I'm just going to go ahead, and I'm going to go back to my effects, fill color grab my eyedropper, and I can go right down here into the art collections and grab any of the greens that I see down here. I don't even have to bring this piece of art up. So perfect. I like that green there. I think it matches the jelly bellies. The orange font doesn't look right anymore, so I'm going to go ahead to my toolbox, tools, fill color, and once again, I'm going to grab the eyedropper. Oh, 
I did the wrong thing. I actually am doing the fill color of the whole box, so I don't want to do that. I'm going to back my fill color off to zero. I'm going to go back to the tools, the font, and now here's the font color. I was moving too fast. All right, so you can do something just like that. So that would be adorable wrapped over the top of green jelly bellies or chocolate chips. So you can do the same thing. You do if we're going to do the white chocolate covered pretzels and skeleton bones, you can put a skull up here. Let's find another piece. Actually, let's just move to another one. We'll do it real quick. Let's type in skull and see what we have for skull. Yep, I see one right down here. So you can get as cartoony as you like or, you know, kind of playful with the kind of the skull and crossbones or just use this design or there's kind of this old apothecary bottle looking one. You can certainly change it up that way. Let's just delete the pumpkin off. I'm unlocking and then I'll delete. Grab the corner, scale it smaller, and just move that into place just like that. And we'll call this skeleton bones. And once again, that type looks a little small, so we'll just scale it up a little bigger, unlock it, and move it down. So there you go. We quickly changed those top two. So you could have a variety. All six can be different. Say you have a son, and he likes really dark things. So if you don't like the orange, he wants them to be scarier. Let's go back to our art collection and type in black paper and see what we get. Let's see what comes up here. It is searching. So maybe I'll do, instead of black paper here, let's see what I've got. We could do, there's a simple black with a solid black. Or you could mix in, there's lots of fun different papers with spiders on it. Um, I mean, the designs and the possibilities are really endless. You just have fun and you just kind of mix what you want to mix in there. There's a nice design like that. You could change this to a purple um, strip if you wanted to, or if you don't want the strip at all, you just want to kind of feel looking, just unlock that piece and delete it. Um, so I recommend if you guys want to do your own treat toppers, um, to go ahead and start with one of our templates. We've gone through kind of all the time of doing the measurements and making them perfect so they fit and lined up. So just start with this, even if you change it up completely, all the papers will be in the right location, all the seals will be in the right location. It's just easier than starting from scratch. There's no reason to, you know, recreate the wheel, if you will. Just go ahead, start with something as a base, and then change it up to fit whatever your style is. So very easy to do. Did everybody get all that? Yeah, we just had a few questions, uh, a few small questions, but Brooke answered them beautifully. Um, why don't I give away some more points and then let you continue? This is a great class. Okay, so I've got the name of Tina LeBlanc. So Tina, your uh, account will get 20 free points in it in the next couple of days, and we're sure glad you joined us. So let's uh, turn it back to Roxanne. Okay, wonderful. Okay, so those are the treat bag toppers. So let's see what we have next. Ah, some Wicked Party Invitations. We have a large selection of party invitations in the template gallery. We have a couple new ones, and we have some from years past, too, which are still right on trend and perfect um, for you, depending on what your costume party is, or if you kind of want to have a Wicked theme, you can do, you know, the green, black, and purple. I love this one. It's so cute by Michelle Bell. Um, Michelle also did this one, Eat, Drink, and Be Scary, which is perfect. Um, this one by Jill Means is a little more uh, traditional with the orange and the black. It could be any type of theme party. And this new one here is one that I call the all black party. You can change the copy to whatever you'd like to fit your party theme. I kind of like the idea of sometimes some people love dressing up for Halloween, adults going to costume parties, and some of us not so much. I'm kind of the one that doesn't like dressing up as much. I'm a little more conservative. So I came up with the idea of an all-black party. It's something that's pretty easy. Everybody can do it. Everybody's got some black in their closet somewhere. And it would be a fun thing to do. It Actually, the back of the invitation is kind of this blood red color. So you could do, if you had a party, it would be all-black everything. 
So you could have splashes of kind of that blood red throughout the party if you wanted, or candles that color. So lots of different things. If you don't want an all-black party, you can easy um, change, easily change the stripes to orange or green or purple or whatever you want. So just find a nice base template that you want to work on, and then you know switch up the copy as necessary. All right, this is a new set called Donors Wanted. I know some of you have young children, and you don't want Halloween necessarily to be scary, but you want it to be fun and playful. So I came up with this one. You're, you're being asked to join a spectacular Halloween costume party and drop by for a bite if you dare. Um, it's kind of cute. It has cute little wording on it, and it's you know pretty playful and pretty tame. Um, with this art collection here, when you look it up, I just chose the blue. It was a little different than the traditional, you know, the orange or the black. But I had also other papers available that looked just like this. They were green, orange, so you could choose whatever color. And then the text I just grabbed directly with, like I showed you with the eyedropper tool, I just grabbed the font color directly from the background paper so that it all matched. So don't forget the address labels. Look great to coordinate with all your party invitations. There's also sheets of these um, cupcake toppers is what we call them, but they are great. They can be used for um, confetti, little gift tags, lots of different options. You can play with these in different ways. And there also is this bucket label. We've been doing buckets for the last couple of years. We kind of do them for all different holidays and different themes. There's popcorn buckets and spa buckets. But you're, you can find at Michael's or some of the other craft stores these clear plastic, um, like paint cans or pails. I think online you can search and order them. They're called clear plastic pails. But they're great. On the 12 by 12 scratch page, which I'll show you in just a minute, there are two designs up on a page. So you basically just change your child's name. And there's a rectangle one in this case and a circle. So the rectangle one you would just adhere to the front of your clear plastic pail, and then the circle top sits perfectly right here in the center. So you can do it that way, or if you don't can't find these clear plastic pails, you can adhere it to anything. Like here's just a blue little pail that I found that's kind of cute. I mean, it could be anything, not cloth, of course, but any metal or plastic um, substance that you can find, these will work. You know, a lot of people like to craft glue it, on. It takes a little while to dry, so you'll just tie, if you put it on the front, you just tie like a ribbon around it just to hold it in place while it dries. Or you can also use spray glue if you like to use that method. It's much faster, maybe not as neat. But there's lots of different options for gluing these onto the front of your pails. So I want to show you guys what to look for when you're looking for these buckets or the cupcake toppers, a lot of times you'll think maybe in the gallery they should look like this label, but they're actually designed on our 12 by 12 scrap pages. So they will look like this when you are searching through the gallery. So there are further instructions in each of the templates, and in a lot of cases there is um, instructions as well with a picture. So you can see what you're doing. We have lots of different Halloween treat buckets available. Some have very fun bracket shapes. There's cartoon ones, there's serious ones, lots of different things, um, lots of different cupcake toppers. I love these. These are just, I believe, they're two-inch circles. So you can either cut these out by hand, or if you have a scrapbooking, um, kind of a punch out for the circles, those work as well. If you have a son, maybe, who likes this design, but a daughter who wants maybe something a little more girly, and you find a different design on another scrap, sheet maybe for the bucket, use your import page feature, just import a second page, and then copy and paste, like the print, yeah, so there's a princess design, you could delete this green one off, copy the princess one from the imported page, and then paste it right back in here. You don't have to print two full designs, you know, that you're not going to use necessarily. You can use that import page feature and combine different designs together. All right, here's another new set. I thought this was very fun. I found this uh, this paper with like bandages wrapped and these fun little eyeballs. <laughs> so I had fun doing this little design. Um, it's kind of open if you dare, like a, a mummy theme. 
So went wild and kind of did all the different candy bars and shapes. Like I showed you earlier, here's a Hershey bar one. The um, wrap is four up to a page. Like I showed earlier, it wraps around the back, and then on the back it says, like, open if you dare from Sarah. Um, this is actually the large address label, and these are on the Kit Kat bars, which I haven't showed you previously in this class, but the Kit Kat bars fit perfectly for our large address label. You'll put it on the front, and just the little edge of the label will wrap right around to the sides. So it won't cover the back, but it'll cover the sides and the front. So these are very fun. I know my kids love Kit Kats. I have Kit Kats and Hershey bars and Kit Kats all over my desk right now. And I don't eat any, but I know they are slowly disappearing. I think my boys have been in my office. <laughs> so we'll see if I have any candy left by Halloween. Um, we also have the Hershey Nuggets wrap. I'm definitely going to be doing some of these. I think this little mummy wrap around the Hershey chocolates are adorable. We've got cupcake toppers. And then we also have Kit Kat labels, which are based on our large address labels. It's just taking the large address label that you see here, and we split the design in two. We just cut it right down the middle. So out of one label, we get two designs for the Tic Tac. And it just wraps right over the top of the Tic Tac, and you don't even have to take the label of the Tic Tac off or anything. It covers perfectly. And our newest design is also based on the large address labels. And it is called our Mummy Candy Flag in this case. But it is actually cutting the design again, the large address label, in half. And you create these little flags. So you'll just take your um, old-fashioned candy stick, if you will. I know I find these all the time at Cracker Barrel for 10 cents a piece. They're very reasonable. I'm sure you can buy them online as well. Um, you could use pixie stick, lots of different things. As long as it's kind of stick shape, then the label just they're peel and stick, so you just wrap it around one side to the other, and then they just stick to each other to make the little flag. So lots of great options for these new flags that are out there now. So like I was saying, saying oh, yep. Oh, okay. sorry, I was going to interrupt. We've got quite a few people saying your voice is not as clear anymore, and I don't know if there's anything oh. you can do on your end, but if you change okay. anything, um, I didn't change anything. Let me just kind of hit my okay. volume and see what mm -hmm. else. Let's see. I'm checking my headphones. Any better? That's better right there. Okay. Great. Yeah. Sorry about that. Oh, that's all right. Okay. Actually, I hear a little feedback now. Let me turn my phone back down. Okay. Everybody good? Yep. Okay. Good. Let's try this again. All right, so like I was saying, the versatility of the labels is amazing. We would have thought at first large address labels are just large address labels, but they're not. <laughs> we have come up with all, certain, all sorts of different designs, so you get basically two designs out of one large address label. Um, as you can see here, a little hard to see, but there's a little black dotted line right down through the center. So that's when you get the, your labels back. You'll just trim it right down the middle giving you the two separate pieces. Um, several of our designs use different colored paper, so it's very obvious where the papers meet. This one with the wraps was a little harder to tell, so I put a little black line down. Um, but they're very fun. So once again, as I said, people think they're ordering one label. It's not just one label. With the large address labels, you'll get 12 labels of the same design. So when you cut out these two designs in particular, you'll end up with 24 of the flag designs or 24 of the Tic Tac labels. And our um, large address labels are less than $4 of the club me member. So when you divide that out by 24, it's very inexpensive to create these fun, customized labels. You know, it, it's, it's not as fun anymore just to hand out a piece of candy. It's just like I love seeing when someone takes the time to customize it. It's got your child's name on it. You know, it can be fun and playful. Are you my mummy? Open if you dare. You know, wrap around, like I said, uh, old-fashioned candy sticks. You could be pencils. You know, instead of if the kids get too much candy, you know, try pencils instead. You know, pixie sticks, glow sticks, drinking straws, whatever you can come up with. You know, go to the candy store and see what's available out there. But these flags wrap perfectly. Uh, the Tic Tac labels. They were specifically designed for Tic Tacs, but I bet there's probably other candies out there that these wraps will work on as well. So, and here's another new set of 
our fun Tic Tac treats. Um, you'll see in the template gallery when you open up design that the large address labels look like this. They'll be sideways for the Tic Tacs, and once again, you'll just cut it right down the center. So there's a whole bunch of different ones. I made, uh, there's vampire blood, skeleton teeth, pumpkin seeds, bat wings, monster vitamins. I know there's a couple here that aren't shown. There's, I can't remember what the cat was. There's a cat one. There's some witch's warts. So there's one, two, three, four different ones. So there's eight designs total. So these are shown on white Tic Tacs, but you can go and find, I found um, the dark red cinnamon Tic Tacs to use for the vampire's blood. Teeth makes perfect sense on white. Bat wings, you can use any color that you want, maybe green. The witch's wart, definitely I would use the green. And the monster vitamins, I was actually thinking there's kind of a mixed up color Tic Tacs. Tac Tac is orange, yellow, red, and green, so that kind of looks like monster vitamins. So the labels, you don't even have to try to take off the Tic Tac original labels, just wrap them right over the top. And most of them are designed with this, um, not a seam, but a line built in, so you know exactly how to line the tops up with the tops of the Tic Tacs. So very easy to do. It would be fun to sit with your kids and play and get these ready for their friends and classmates. This is a new design this year called um, the Chevron design, basically Chevron Halloween. It's kind of got a modern twist. There is a five by seven card. There are Tic Tac labels, flags. There's a Halloween bucket, if you will, the label on the top. There are the Hershey Nuggets wraps and also the cupcake toppers. So there's spiders here, but you could easily change it into bats if you like. You know, look through our little Halloween goodies and see what you'd like to, to put on. And here is a mock-up of the whole thing, so you can see how it would look like in a party setting. These are actually drink labels. We use the cupcake toppers to actually make these fun labels instead. They're just tied on with ribbons. There's a couple different ways you can tie them on. Just punch a hole in the top. And it says trick or treat from whatever the child's name is. Look for the old fashioned root beer. You can do cream soda. The orange crush looks great with the orange liquid inside. But you'll need to remove the labels on these so it doesn't really say what the product is. I have found that Goo Gone is actually my favorite kind of sticky um, sticker removal kind of thing. The sticky part gets removed. You can also use a lot of those citrus based cleaners. Sometimes I soak them in hot water first to get the initial paper label off, and then it'll need some cleanup with the goo gone. But they look great, so it's kind of fun. Here's a straw sample with the little flags on it. The cupcake toppers, you can stick them onto toothpicks if you want. You can stick them to the front of lollipops, or you can go ahead and put them right into the frosting, and they look great this way too. And I love, this is my favorite set <laughs> this year. This is um, a Halloween set by Cynthia. She did this great art collection and then did all the coordinating pieces right along with it. So she's got all the pieces as well. She's got this clever metal uh, print right here, Miller's Dead and Breakfast Inn, they can see. It would be very fun to hang on your front door. She's got candy. These are kind of the uh, Kit Kat bar wrappers or any other treats. They can also be maybe a plate of baked goods or pumpkin bread that you've wrapped in cellophane, and then you just sticker, put it right on the front of that would be great. The nuggets, there's a 5x5 five five Halloween card as well as a 5x7 invitation. And she has done these fabulous labels. I love these. They're already designed for you. You can just print them out and cut them out and put them onto your favorite bottle, and I'll show you some examples of that. But if she doesn't have exactly the one you're looking for, she's also provided you with kind of these blank labels and then all the little pieces so that you can come up with your own special potion, if you will. So she's done it all. This is great. It's so flexible. So you definitely have to try this one out. So let's go ahead and take a peek at the setup. This is actually a sneak peek of a photo that's going to be in the new idea book. So be on the lookout for this. 
it actually it shows you the cute little different brews, the witch's brew and the monster medicine and bat broth. And I, these are just uh, so clever. So there's lots of things you can do with them. I'll, I'll show you that too coming up. Here's the party invitation front and back, the metal print, and then kind of the wrappers on some of the candy as well. I just thought you guys would love this set. It's so fun. All right, so here's kind of the other ideas too. She's already set up a 12 by 12. Um, let me go back. She's set up a 12 by 12 page already with these these labels on it already. I believe there are nine labels on the 12 by 12, and she's already pre-sized them to fit on kind of the little soda glass bottles. But if you wanted to, you can just take a quick measurement of any. You know, it could be these liter bottles. It could be candy jars you have at home. You can even kind of do the apothecary. I know this looks a little ghoulish here, but these are little plastic, little plastic uh, animal rat in the jar. Some of the kids would really like this. Uh, you can use, um, it might be actually Mountain Dew, I think is that color. You know, some type of liquid. So you just measure your jar or your bottle, and then all you're gonna do is you're gonna start a 12 by 12 page, or if you want more, you can actually step up to the 11 by 14 print measure the size of the approximate label, and then when you drag on your label, you just kind of resize it so that it fits the size of the jar you're gonna put it on. Once again, you'll publish the sheet, you'll get it back, you cut it right out, and you just glue it right onto any bottle or container that you'd like to. All right, so we're moving away from treats for a while, and we do have some Halloween storybooks. Um, this one is a great one from Sarah Wise, and it's in our snapshot story um, layout. It's easy to use. It's fun. The kids love looking back over time and seeing their different costumes that they've worn. Um, so lots of different options for storybooks, too, so search the gallery for that. And then we're back to our wonderful subway prints. There's lots of different options. There's this Halloween countdown one, which I wanted to show you. Um, this is actually one that you can write on. We haven't done this before, or we haven't done a lot of it, but if you print out the 11 by 14 print, if you select the UV coating as an option at checkout, you can actually take a dry erase pin and put right on the UV coating, and it will wipe off. So you can have a, this in your kitchen and have the kids count down days with you. So this is a great option. You can also just print out the print regular, and if you're gonna frame it and put it behind glass, dry erase pins also work on glass. So you can just wipe it off right on the glass. We've got other options, you know, all the kind of the spooky streets, and there's a place to put your street address in here, enter if you dare. Another great one from Carrie Perrette, like her similar, her Thanksgiving themed one. And then Cynthia Coulon also has a couple that looks similar to this. She's got a black and white version as well as these spooky kooky little critters here. All right, subway art is tricky sometimes, but if you start with a base where a designer's already done the template for you, it is really easy to change it up with your words. Here's a perfect example. Brooke Mayer did this Dream Big maybe a month or two ago. So I said, well, it'd be kind of fun if she did one for Halloween and Thanksgiving or fall. And all she did was she took the exact same layout and just changed the words. As you can see, she chose lines that were longer, more letters. She chose similar. You don't want to take like this jump in puddles and change it to the word uh, fire or something as short short words, go ahead and find similar words or phrases so that you can use almost the same letters, if you will. So it's a great way. She actually has these great two Halloween ones just showing you how you can change the color. And I do love this fall one. I think this is great. And I love the top of the turquoise in here. All right, we're already running out of time. There's, there's just too many great candy wrappers and things to show. So I'm gonna go ahead and move quickly into showing you how to make uh, or create successful subway art, and you must use your rulers. That's kind of the secret. So the secret is really using your rulers. Everything needs to be really lined up on a grid. I know when you look at them, they don't necessarily look like they're all lined up. You know, the ones that have words going in different directions often look random, but if you look at them closely or turn on the grids in studio, you will see that all the line widths line up together, just like you're seeing here. I just kind of 
showed you how everything lines up along the same lines. Um, to find your rulers, you go up in your studio, once you open a project, view to rulers, and you'll scroll across and you'll see show rulers. They default to the red, which I use most often, but you can also choose black or white. There is an exception to the rule. I was just telling you how everything lines up perfectly. There is an exception. If you have cursive fonts or word art with little swashes, swashes you want the, those little swashes to hang beyond the line. It just balances better. If you were to shift, like harvest in a little bit so the squash touched here, there would be kind of this big open space, empty space here. So you want the little squashes to hang out. And I actually like them. They add a little bit of interest, so it's not really super tight grid-like. But everything does line up on a grid. All right, two other quick tricks that you'll need to know for subway art, but this also applies to any other projects you're working on. A lot of people get stuck because their studio kind of stops at 100 for making your font larger. You can type in 150, it will go to 150, but what if you want it larger for a canvas or a, you know, like a big word on a print? What you need to do is you need to hold down your control key. Your control key on your keyboard is what you need to do. It will, if you grab the corner of your text block, it will unlock the proportions of your element so you can stretch it beyond the 150 and in any desired shape or size. Um, if you want it to stay proportional, hold the shift key down in conjunction with the control key. And if you drag, it will keep in true proportion that way. But that will get you well beyond the 150 point type. The other thing I get a lot of questions about is how do I stretch my text to fill a line? Sometimes like on that word art, the letters don't quite fill up all the way to the end of the line so that I can get that perfect line up on the grid. What you're going to do is you are going to use a combination. You're going to try your font size first, adjust your letter spacing, but then if you still need it to stretch just a bit more to fill up the line, you're going to go ahead and hold down your control key and just drag. You can drag from the corner, top, side, bottom, whichever direction you need it to fill. You're going to use that control key and drag it. It just stretches it just a little bit. And for Mac users, use the command instead of the control key. So that's the key there. All right, we're running out of time, so I'm going to quickly go back over to Studio. Let's see. Let me find my Studio here. Oh. Move that out of the way. Oh, wrong one. All right, Cynthia, do you see any questions coming in? No, I think we're doing a good job of taking care of them. So, okay. But yeah, people have really enjoyed the the these templates. There's so many fun new ones, and uh, just get it just makes me want to get going on some Halloween <laughs> stuff. <laughs> I know I've got a head start because I've been working on all these already. So yeah, I'm, no, it's well pretty. underway. <laughs> All right, so let's just go to a real simple one first. Let's see here. It's just taking a second. Let's just go to this Road to Halloween one, and I'm just going to show you how to put your address in real quick and then adjust the line if we need it. Most of these subway word art are pretty much all done for you. You usually just need to change a family name or if you, you know, had the word maybe bonfire in there but you didn't want to put – bonfire, you want to change it to football, you know, just change a couple of the words out. So basically, you're just going to go in here, and let's type in an address here. I'm actually, the little toolbars that show up here, sometimes they get in my way, so I'm going to go to view, and I'm going to turn them off here with the toolbar, and then I'm just going to double click on my text, and we're going to say one, two, three, four, main, main street. So now if you can see, it doesn't quite fill up the line. I'm going to view, turn on my rulers. So I can see here, I'm going to line right up to either side here. So I'm going to go in bigger. So I don't want to really stretch it all the way out so the letters will get really distorted. So I'm going to use a combination of letter spacing. So I'm going to space out the letters a little bit more. And then I'm going to use my trick. I'm going to hold down the control key. 
and then I'm just dragging the side. See, I'm pulling it out, so this gets lined up exactly, and then I go back to the other side, hold the control key down, and pull it out just like that. So now it's just lined up perfectly. Let's go back. How easy was that? <laughs> that was so easy. So I just changed it to 123 Main Street. If you have a longer address, just reduce the font size a little bit and the letter spacing, easy to do. Let's show you how to quickly change the colors on these. Maybe you don't want the orange and yellow, but let's maybe let's try what other colors are good for Halloween. Maybe green and purple. So let's do a green. Let's see what looks good. Let's try a green here, and let's turn this one to a purple. So I'm just using my little eyedropper tool. Let's grab a purple. You have to be careful you don't. With a black background, you have to do kind of a brighter bit of purple so it pops. So those aren't great, but in the interest of time. So let's go ahead, and I want to make all these yellow ones purple. I'm just going to grab it. I'm not going to try to find it again exactly where I found it from. I'm just going to go back up to the font and grab it from here just so I know that they're all exactly the same purple. So I just kind of do that every time. Let's go up and grab the green. Great. Easy to do, right, everybody? Yeah, we're looking good. We're getting lots of nice um, words of appreciation, so that's, that's really sweet. Wonderful. I know. Roxanne does put a ton of work into this and, and does – um, goes the extra mile with these classes, and, but uh, we sure enjoy them. So thanks. Oh, well, good. Oh, I I love being here and teaching. There's so many <laughs> options. I mean, I just wish I had another hour to show you all the other hundreds of projects that are available. And once again, you know, if you want to change the background, let's go to your art collections. Say you've got a really dark front door, and if you put a dark print there, it's going to be too much. Let's change it. Let's see what we have for wood. So this is kind of a wood grain background here. Let's see if I've got a lighter colored one. Look through our papers. Yeah, so you can drag and drop anything. And if, I know this design, if I drag it, let's see here. It's not locked right now. If I lock it, the background, I will get the little drag and drop button. If you can see it here, it's kind of hiding. And if you notice that, that white paper turned black, is because that was a piece of brown wood that I wanted darker. I wanted it almost black. So if you something funky happens when you drop in a piece of paper or it doesn't turn color, the embellishment, go ahead and go to the toolbox effects and you will see there's probably a fill color been added. So what you need to do is you just need to turn that back to zero. So there you've got it back to normal coloring. And then you would just make your white ones black if you wanted. So it's a quick and easy way to change if you had a dark door, then a white print would look much better. And it'd be fun with the orange and yellow too. So easy to change, but go ahead and start with one of our templates. It kind of gives you the starting point and you can kind of see how they're built when you turn on the rulers. So even though the designs look random, there's definitely a grid system to them. And that's what makes the difference between a successful piece of word art and a very kind of random piece of word art. So I hope that helps everybody. I know we're out of time already tonight. Terrible. I know. Time flew by way too fast, but I know we all enjoyed it. And, yeah, we'll get this recording up, and then I hope tomorrow, um, maybe late morning, so you can watch it again. But definitely head to the template gallery and see what's new there and get your hands um, to work in studio and get you, uh, make some of these fun things. I know you're family and friends will enjoy them. So before we just quickly sign off, I will give away a few more points. We've got Kristen Courtright, uh, or maybe she says it. No, it's Kristen. Kristen Courtright, thanks for joining us, and we will get those points, um, 20 points into your account. Um, so thanks again, Roxanne, for always You're very welcome. With such great instruction and really inspirational templates. And uh, we will join everyone next month. Well, we're, we'll be going doing all the ins and outs of calendars because it's definitely time to get going on calendars. And we might have a few surprises by then, too. So be mm. sure to plan on joining us in October. So thanks again, Wonderful. everyone. <laughs> yep, it's, it's going to be great. So go ahead and get your Thanksgiving and Halloween projects done now so that you're ready to go on calendars.